All right, uh, welcome. A uh, short video on how to create a new project using the STM32 Cube MX for our Nucleo F746 board. So I've launched STM32 Cube MX from my start menu. Uh, this is what it shows up. So I'm going to create a new project. So click on new project. This will bring up the microcontroller selector or the board selector. I'm interested in the SD Micros Nuclear 144 board, STM32 F7 series processor, and I have the Nucleo F746 board. So double click on that. This will bring up the uh, board specific settings on the processor. So it might take a few minutes. So here it is. So here is the F7 chip with all the pins mapped to certain uh, signals on the board, pre-mapped to certain signals on the board. For example, if I zoom in right here, you'll see you'll see that port B0 is mapped to a green LED on the board and so forth. For this exercise, uh, what I'm going to do is ask you to clear the pinout. So go to uh, pinout and clear the pinouts. Say yes. And now what has happened is basically none of the pins have the preset board specific uh, items right uh, for this we're creating a very simple system so uh, in order to do that uh, i do need us to go and set the debugger on the sys uh, peripheral so under this the peripherals click on sys debug and set to serial wire this is how we're going to communicate uh, with the board to download the code and to debug uh, and so forth so this is all we need to set on this particular pin Clock configuration allows us to change the different clocks. The Nucleo board that I have and the STM32 F7 that I have runs at a maximum of 216 megahertz. So it says right there, uh, if you hit enter, say okay. When you hit enter, this clock configuration for the different peripheral buses get adjusted based on the edge clock that I chose. and the Nucleo board does not have an external crystal, so an internal 16 megahertz RC oscillator goes through a PLL circuitry that's generating the 216 megahertz clock that I asked it to generate. So that's all that's necessary in this. You could change this based on your desired clock uh, requirements. If you want to have a HSC a external crystal, which might be important for some projects, uh, then you'll have to po actually populate uh, the board uh, with a crystal. Under configuration, so this is the default. Uh, in this case, we actually will not do much. In this case, uh, all we'll do is basically explore the Cortex M7. Since uh, by default it uses the AXI flash, uh, let's actually change that to a TCM tightly coupled memory interface. When you do tightly coupled memory interface, the ART accelerator uh, gets enabled by default, and an instruction prefetching also gets enabled by default. So let's leave it at that. Uh, let's apply, say OK. We're done with the configuration. We don't have anything at all about the Parkman Junction calculator. Now I want to set the project, so go to Project and Settings. And this is where you tell it what the project name is. So I'm going to call it, let's say, uh, LEC2 underscore uh, TCM RAM test or TCM RAM. Uh, you can choose the IDE that we're going to use. We don't have the IAR EWARM. We actually have the Kyle, which is the MDK ARM V5. So MDK ARM V5 is a Kyle. Uh, code generator tab. I like to do copy only the necessary library files. And I also like to cre uh, check the generate peripheral initialization as a pair of .c, .h files per peripheral. Say OK. okay. Now, we've created the settings. Now, I just want to emphasize that on the Cortex-M7, you could have left this by default at AXI interface. Uh, for, some, uh, for just the purposes of this video, I changed it to TCM uh, interface, tightly coupled memory interface. Uh, which takes us more towards a real-time processor than the AXI flash. Uh, there are techniques on AXI flash we'll see we can use with instruction cache to match the performance of the TCM flash. So I do this. Now, basically hit the generate source. 
you can also get to that from the project menu and say generate source so right now it's it's taking all the configurations that I've set in this uh, stm 32 qmx window and it's applied that and it's created a project so I can either do open folder to see where the uh, folder is so let me just do open folder for now so this is basically what it created so this is what it created uh, if you look at this uh, that's the this dot IOC is actually the QMX project. Uh, you can double click on it and it'll launch QMX next time. MDK ARM is where the uh, Kyle Microvision project. So that's the Kyle Microvision project. If I wanted to launch it, this is what I would click. And then there's a source flight like it includes all the drivers that I need and the source code. So the main file is right here as well. So let's open up the Kyle project. If I open up the Kyle project now, it's going to bring up my Kyle window. So my Kyle window is right here. So this is the Kyle window. If I open up the plus sign under applications slash user, this is where I'm going to see my main file. All right. So this is the main file. This is what I'm going to edit later on uh, if I want to do certain things with my code uh, here is the simsys uh, we'll talk more detail about the simsys later on these are libraries so here's the startup file uh, here is the different uh, things that are associated with the design that i chose uh, these are called a hardware abstracted library for the stm32 f7 so HAL, in other words a hal library so that's the uh, that's the tree if I wanted to see my project options, I can click on the options here. I can see that the crystal was set to 216 megahertz. Uh, the, the RAM block is set to 20 and 8 zeros. That's actually the address of the uh, data tightly coupled memory. And the 200, that's the uh, DCM flash memory. Okay, So we can look at this. In order to compile, you just hit this button rebuild uh, so it'll build all the project Dep uh, it might take a while depending on how many uh, library fi driver files you have in your project uh, I'm gonna pause this for a second and continue when the uh, compiling is done so it's starting to compile all right, so my uh, compilation is done it took a minute to do this uh, zero errors zero warnings now Everything is compiled. Next time when I need to change something, I will just hit this just simple build instead of the rebuild all because rebuild all basically tries to build all the libraries, so it'll take a while, whereas build only does the ones that have a change in it. So let's look at the main.c. So the main file that's created, this is auto-generated. If we want to include something in here, we should always include between lines that say user code begin and a user code end. Uh, what that does is if we go back and make edits to the STM32 uh, or some kind of edit here and regenerate the code, it overwrites this entire file and we'll lose our change. The only way to preserve uh, the code that we write uh, from changes as we uh, go through and maybe make changes with, uh, with this is to put them in the user code begin, user code end block so let's get started here let's just do a simple loop uh, uh, for our exercise so I'm gonna go and under private variables I'm gonna start adding a few things so pound define num underscore samples let's say 500 for now uh, uint 32 I'm gonna create an array uh, well I'm not creative I'm gonna call it array 1 and I'm gonna do it num samples uh, I'm going to create a variable called int n and a uint32 um, and call it accumulator and save a zero. So let me save that. Uh, that's all under the user variable. Under main, I'm going to go in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically initialize this array. I'm going to initialize this array and copy and paste my code here instead of typing it now. And so I've initialized my array accumulator to a zero. I have a for loop that goes through and populates this array. Now under user code begin two, user code begin two, I'm going to place a simple loop again, similar. Uh, and what I'm basically going to do is add through that array. 
Okay, I'm basically going to add through that array in this case. So here, here I have my code. Uh, so let's uh, build this. So all changes will build, and this time it should be fairly quick because the only file that it changed is the main.c, so it's done in six seconds. Now I have my board connected to through a USB to my computer right now, so I'm going to hit the debugger. Here the debugger is starting up. Uh, as it's starting, it's going to download the code into the board. Uh, what I want to do is basically two things. Under the memory uh, window, right here on the bottom debug window, under memory, I'm going to put down the address of array 1. And what I'm going to see here is my address of array 1, all the values are 0. So let's go see here. I'm going to put a break breakpoint at the beginning of the for loop and the breakpoint right after that for loop. In this for loop, we're basically populating this array. So I'm counting from 0 to 500, and the array is being loaded uh, or initialized right here. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to run. It's going to stop at the first breakpoint. By the way, this uh, is something we're going to keep an eye out for. Currently, it says states of 2480. So that's 2480 uh, CPU states it took to get to this location. Now, notice that the memory is still zero. After I hit this, it should st stop at the next breakpoint. And in this case, now I see that one, two, three, four. So the memory has been loaded right here, right? And it took me three, three, five, two, four. So three, five, two, four. So that's uh, basically. 3524 minus 2480 clock cycles. So if I do a calc and get to 3524 minus 2480, uh, that's 1000 clock cycles. 1044 clock cycles. So it took 1044 clock cycles to basically initialize the array. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, set up another breakpoint right here at the for loop. And I'm going to let it go till there. All right? And in this case, now what I want to do is click on uh, the accumulator, right click, and say add accumulator to watch one. So this allows me to uh, watch the, what's the value of that accumulator. Right now it's zero. Uh, I can choose the value of this accumulator in hexadecimal by default, or I prefer uh, decimal uh, in this case. Okay, So that's where I'm at. Uh, let me put my breakpoint here on the while loop. And basically, it's currently at 6810. So 6810 is the number of clock cycles right here. I'm looking at the states at the beginning of the for loop. I'm going to remove that breakpoint so that I don't get keep coming back. And I have a breakpoint right at the while loop. And I'm going to hit run. When I hit run, I stop at the uh, this while loop. And this tells me I have a total of 8088 clock cycles. So that's a uh, total of 8088 minus 6810 that's 1278 clock cycles to basically go through that array and add it so there's a total of 500 variables there so the, we did 500 iterations of the array so 1278 divided by 500 that's about two and a half 2.5 clock cycles uh, per uh, uh, per summation, right? So when I add a number 1 to 500, actually what I expect is 1, 2, 4, 7, 5, 0. That's the result. And I verify that that is, in fact, the correct result. Okay. Uh, now, actually, so if we had not used a debugger, uh, a debug value with a breakpoint, the breakpoints and the debugging feature basically adds a few clock cycles. We could have potentially gotten this to an average of about 2 uh, clock cycles per iterations instead of about two and a half uh, clock cycles per iterations in this particular case. Okay, So that's how you basically create a project with the STM32 CubeMX, uh, bring it to Kyle Microvision, and debug it. Now, if we make any changes to the Kyle Microvision, so for example, uh, if I make any changes here and generate the source code again, uh, anything that is under the user code uh, begin and end will stay. Anything outside it will actually not uh, stay at all. Okay, and uh, so 
so that basically concludes uh, this particular exercise and in the next exercise I'll show you uh, exact same code uh, uh, except with the AXI flag.